Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma. I'm a first year, first grade teacher and today we're gonna talk about my Cricut. I've actually been asked to talk about multiple times how I use my Cricut in my classroom, during classroom setup, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm really excited to say that Cricut is sponsoring this video. So thank you Cricut. I am so honored to be working with them because I genuinely love them. I've been using them for over a year now. So many of the things in my classroom I created with my Cricut. So we are going to be talking today about all of the fun ways that I have used my Cricut in my classroom. Before we get started, if you are new here, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and stick around for future videos. I am a teacher and I have been vlogging my whole first year journey in the midst of all the crazy, but I also upload a lot of lifestyle content. So make sure that you subscribe. And if you are not new here, thank you for being here. I love you and I appreciate you. It is people like you who watch my videos and support me and give me the opportunity to work with brands like Cricut, which is insane to me. So thank you. I'm so glad that you are here and I'm so thankful for you. So I'm going to, before we get started, just kind of talk about my background with Cricut and how I used my Cricut to set up my classroom. So I graduated from college in December of 20. 19 and for graduation my father-in-law bless his soul bought me a cricket and i was so excited so this <laughs> is the cricket that he bought me um this is the explore air 2 it's this gorgeous little mint color and i will open it up for you so cute this is the og cricket that i've had for over a year now i'm still obsessed with it and this is what i used setting up my classroom i love the explore air 2 it did me so well and i could make so many different things with it so i will be showing you how to make something with this later and then cricket was kind enough to send me the cricket joy which look at this are you joking it's so cute it's adorable. To be honest with you, I did not know very much about the Joy before they sent it to me for this video. And I was testing it out. And the first time that I used it, I was instantly obsessed. It has all of the like amazing things that I love about the Air 2 that I've had for a year, but it's so tiny and it's so much easier and faster. So I'm gonna also show you how to use this in a different project, but I am so obsessed. Like look how little it is like the size of my head. I love that it is so small and compact because I can literally take this anywhere. I also love this because it connects to your laptop via Bluetooth, which is so easy. It is also extremely fast. It takes me no time at all to just pull this out, connect it to my laptop via Bluetooth and get a project taken care of in like 15 minutes or less, which is amazing. It's so easy, it's so fast. It's also really easy to understand for beginners. Like I said, I will show you how to make something so I'll talk a little bit more about this in the tutorial portion but I love that like you don't need that many materials for the joy you don't even need a work mat which you have to have a mat for all of the other Cricut machines but with the joy they make smart materials so you literally just put the vinyl or whatever you're using into the machine without a mat and it automatically does it for you it's so easy and I like I said I didn't know much about it before I received it and I was like what have I been why didn't I know about this it's amazing and I really like that it has less materials to work with so that's the Cricut Joy the things that I'm going to show you can be done on any of the machines obviously each machine does it a little bit differently like the Joy you don't need a mat as long as you have the smart materials the air you would need a mat but you can make a little bit bigger pieces it's really just about what are you going to create so let's just get started with the tutorials first of all I have so many projects in my classroom of how I have used my Cricut so I'm gonna show you those before I do my project so that you can see how I actually have used this before I even had a sponsorship with Cricut the first thing that we're gonna talk about is vinyl and you might be like I don't know what vinyl is vinyl is when there is an adhesive backing and it's kind of like a sticker that you are able to use to label things and make things customized I love vinyl I will show you all of the 
places that I use vinyl in my classroom. I have some file buckets and I used vinyl to label those files so I know what is in each bin and it's also just really cute. I also used vinyl on my clipboards to label the student numbers. So each student has a clipboard and it's in the corner and it's much cuter than if I were to just write it in Sharpie. Another way I use vinyl is to label and organize all of my monthly books that go on my book display. So if you follow me over on Instagram, which if you don't, you should. Every month I post that I change my book display depending on the month. I organize them in these scrapbook cases that I got off of my wish list from Amazon and I label them with vinyl to be able to tell the months apart. This also sounds really silly, but I also used vinyl um, on my pencil tubs. So one of them has dual pencils, one of them has sharp. And then I also customized my planner, which I love using vinyl to customize things um, and make like gifts for people, but I use it on top of my planner and I just love it. So now I'm gonna show you how to create vinyl. On my whiteboard, I have a junior teacher of the day and I put their name in a little magnetic clip and every day I have a different junior teacher and I absolutely love this. But when I came up with this idea, it was like the day before school and <laughs> I literally just printed off a piece of paper that said junior teacher and I cut it out and I stuck it on my whiteboard and it's worked fine because nobody cares but me. But I wanted to make it a little bit nicer, a little bit neater, and so I decided to make vinyl to put on my whiteboard. I will be using removable vinyl. Um, they make removable and permanent vinyl. I'm using removable so that if I ever leave this classroom, I can easily just take it off of my whiteboard. So. Let's go. For the first project, I'm going to be using some vinyl. Today, I'm going to be using the Cricut Joys Smart Vinyl. I really, really love this specific vinyl because you can just put it directly into the Cricut Joy and you don't need a work mat. And I think that's like the coolest thing ever. So I'm gonna be using this today just to show you how you could also use a mat if you have just regular vinyl, it would work just as well. The other tools I'm gonna to be needing are the weeder, this little scraper, and a pair of scissors. So first I opened up Cricut Design Space and I need to create a new project. Then I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to click text and that will give me a text box to type in. Then I'm going to type junior teacher because that is what I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to select my text and come up to the top and click the box that says font. There are lots of fonts to choose from that Cricut offers, but also if you have a font that you use regularly on your computer, if you click system at the top, it will have all of your downloaded fonts that you can also use. I'm going to look through Cricut's fonts and see if there are any that jump out at me and just kind of test some of those out to see how they would look. Okay, so I think I like this font. It's called Boink Corn, <laughs> but I think it's really fun. And something that I do very often is up here, there is a little section called letter space. And if you want to put more space in between your letters or less space, you can adjust that here. I usually like to create less space in between the letters. And then once it looks how I like, I need to figure out the measurements. Now, since this is just going up on my whiteboard and there's not really a measurement that I need to stay within, I'm going to just kind of use my mat as a measuring guide to see how big my vinyl is going to be. So right now I have it at about eight inches long so I can kind of visualize it on my mat how long that would be and I think I actually want to make it a little bit smaller. Another tip is this lock button down here if you select that it will let you really stretch and move your letters around or if you keep it locked you are able to make it bigger and smaller without it messing up like the distortion and all of that kind of stuff. Sometimes I like to select the lock just so that I can make it a little bit taller um, and kind of customize it a little bit more. I think that's about how I want it. It's not very big, but I think it will be perfect on my whiteboard. The next step that I need to do is I need to come up to the top and select the machine that I will be using. So I, for this project, I'm going to use the Cricut Joy. So I need to make sure that I select the Cricut Joy. And then all I have to do is click make it. It's going to ask me with a Cricut Joy if I want to use a mat or not. Now, like I said, if you use the Smart Vinyl like this one, you don't need a mat. You could put this on your mat and then all you would have to do is select on mat. 
but because I will not be using a mat, I'm going to go ahead and click without mat and done. Now I need to make the very difficult decision of what color I'm going to use because they are all adorable. Like look at this color palette, it's so pretty. I think I'm gonna go with this really pretty peach color. It tells me the names on the back. I'm gonna select this light pink that's called Petal. Now I'm going back to Design Space. It will allow you to move your object around. This is just one and it's all together, so it makes it really, really easy. But if I were doing multiple cuts here, I would kind of organize my mat so that it would all fit and be able to be cut in one load. Now, one thing I really love about the Cricut Joy is I don't have to plug it into my laptop. I just have to plug it in to the back of the Cricut Joy and plug it into the wall. And it is going to connect via Bluetooth to my laptop. Now, I'm going to select the material that I am using. So, I am using removable smart vinyl, which I see right here, but Let's go back. If I if I were using something that I did not see here, you can click browse all materials and it has lots of different options. If you go up to all materials, it will list like everything you could ever think of. You can also search things up here. So if you don't see it in this bar right here, you can click browse. Now all that I have to do here is load my smart vinyl directly into the machine. I'm just gonna insert it and it will automatically catch it and, and load it. There it was just checking to make sure that I had enough. And once it's ready, it will tell you to select go. So I just gotta click go. I'm gonna unload and it will kind of spit it back out at me. This is where I will grab my scissors and I will just trim the area around where it was just cut. So then I can reuse all of this again. The next step is I need to weed out the excess. So I'm going to grab this little weeder. I love this tool. And a tip that I learned recently is if you grab a lint roller and stick it in front of you and you can use that to catch all of the adhesive pieces that you weed out. I saw it on TikTok, I'm pretty sure, but it works so well. All right, now the next thing I need to do is I need to get it off of this piece of backing and on to a piece of transfer tape. When you are using vinyl, transfer tape is your best friend. This is what Cricut's transfer tape looks like, but there are lots of different options out there, but I really do like their transfer tape. It works really, really well. So I will have to cut it this way, and then I will just kind of make a little slit to measure where the cut needs to go. Now, I need to peel the backing off of the transfer tape, which sometimes is the hardest part, like this. Okay, I'm then going to just place it over the top here. So now it looks like this. Now I'm going to grab my little scraper tool and you are going to just scrape the surface basically to transfer the adhesive vinyl from the white paper that's on the bottom. It transfers it to the piece of tape instead and then the goal is that you peel off the transfer tape and the vinyl is attached to it instead of the backing. you can see that it's stuck to the tape. However, I'm going to actually leave the backing on until I get to school and then I will take this with me and if the letters get stuck, I'll be able to scrape them a little bit harder. And all I will have to do is just peel it off and stick it onto my whiteboard, which I will show you when I get to school. Hopefully this made sense with how to use vinyl. I really, really love vinyl for so many different purposes. And like, look how cute this is. I can't wait to see it on my whiteboard. Next, let's talk about bulletin boards. I love bulletin boards and 
I think this is probably what people ask me about the most is how I made my bulletin board letters. I love to make headers for my bulletin boards and I love displaying content and curriculum and things that my students can use to enhance their learning. And I created all of my headers with my Cricut and then I just laminated them to make them nice and sturdy. I also made this little um, Our Bright Work sign with my Cricut making those bulletin board letters. And again, I laminated them. I also used it to to create this readers are leaders board. I get questions about this board all the time. And then the last one that is by far my most asked about part of my classroom is the you are loved sign above my door. This is my favorite part, my whole classroom. I use this technique that I'm about to show you to create this. I use one page per letter. So one letter took up the entire page of black cardstock. It's super easy and I absolutely love how it turned out. Let's go make some bulletin board letters. For this next project, you are going to need some construction paper or cardstock. I prefer to use cardstock because I think it's a little bit sturdier, but if you were going to laminate your bulletin board letters, you could also use construction paper and you can obviously use any color. I have this one on hand in cardstock, so I'm gonna use this one to demonstrate. For most of them in my classroom, I did use black cardstock and I love how it turned out. Um, so you can obviously customize this depending on your classroom theme and what you're going for. You're also going to to need a mat. This is a Cricut Strong Grip mat. And I'm going to be using my Explore Air today. Now this was not sent to me. This is what I have had, um, but I love it. So this is what I'm going to use to get the big bulletin board letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It is plugged into the wall as well as into my laptop with a USB. I am going to click the open button over here and open it up. Now I'm not going to create a whole bulletin board for you because I don't need that in my classroom right now. And I will um, just demonstrate the way that I created all of my bulletin boards in my classroom. Going over to Design Space, I just created a new project and I'm going to insert text. So I'm just going to type the letter A and I found this font on the Cricut system. It's called Announcement and I really liked the way that it looked. Again, you can use your own fonts. I'm going to kind of use my mat as a guide for how big I want it to be. So I'm gonna go over and select my Cricut Explore. I like to kind of divide it by the letters. So if I were wanting to spell a word, I would Command C and copy and then Command V and I would paste and then I would change each letter. This is just how I did it. This is not how you have to do it. But then I know it's going to be the exact same size. And the reason for this is because when I hit make it, I can maneuver these letters to try and fit the maximum amount as possible. If it was one word, it's going to keep it together and it's gonna separate it and I'm gonna end up using more paper. So when you split it up by the letters, you can move it like I am right now and really try to get the most out of your space. This isn't a great example, but hopefully you understand my point here. Again, this is just how I like to do it. There is no right or wrong way, but this is what I like. Now I need to go to this little dial and I need to select what I am cutting. I'm going to just turn it to cardstock. So if you look now on design space, it automatically selected my material to cardstock because I change that dial. What I need to do now is get my mat ready. So I'm gonna remove this little adhesive top and I wanna grab my construction paper and now I need to put my cardstock on my paper. And I like to take a look at my mat because it will tell me exactly the like outline of where my paper should be. So I'm gonna put mine right here and I just wanna make sure that it goes all the way over to the six and all the way down to the eight, which this paper does. So I'm just gonna push all the air bubbles out, push down the edges, and then it is waiting on you. So if you notice, this little arrow is blinking, which means it is ready to load my mat. So this is what my mat looks like. I'm going to slide it into my Cricut and the Joy just automatically takes it, but the Maker, you have to um, click this button right here to load, so. Next, the little Cricut symbol is blinking, which means it is ready to go. And all you have to do is click that and it will start to cut. So here we go. Now the unload button is blinking again, so I will click that and it will release it. Then I'm going to use my weeder and I'm going to have that help me pull 
up the excess paper. And I'll also use that to pull out the middle. We've got our little bulletin board letter. And honestly, you could absolutely just staple this to a board or tape it on your wall and it's super sturdy when it's cardstock. But a lot of the times what I would do is I would put these in a laminating sheet, laminate them, and then I would just cut around the edges by hand just to make them last longer. So that's an option, it's not absolutely necessary. I have seen people laminate their cardstock ahead of time and then they put it on their Cricut mat and it will cut your laminated paper for you. That is an option and that will save you some hand cutting, but I like to do it this way and then laminate because you can kind of, like I said earlier, move them around your laminating sheet and really get the most out of your lamination. If you just laminate one piece of paper and all you get is one letter out of that laminating sheet, I think that's kind of wasteful in my opinion, but it's definitely an option if you don't wanna hand cut them out. So that's what it looks like. I hope that makes sense. It's so easy. I also just wanted to show you some cool things about Design Space. Design Space is a subscription, but I have absolutely loved it so far. So I wanted to show you something that I just recently found. So I'm gonna go to new project and I'm going to come over to the side and click images. And there are endless pictures, icons, graphics that you can create with your Cricut that somebody else posted. So I, for example, could type in here, teach and see 97 things came up that I could pick from. And these are all already adorable. And with design space, they are included and they are free. So let's say I wanted to make something that had this design on it. All I have to do since I am subscribed to design space is click it and hit insert images and it automatically places it onto my design space board for me. I could also weld them both together so that it's one cut. So now it's all going to cut the same. And I just have found so many great images over here. If you watch my vlogs, you'll see that I've made a couple different shirts based on some images that I got from this gallery over here and I just love it. So that's definitely something that I have really, really loved about Design Space and that subscription. Just wanted to throw that out there. That is going to be it for today's video. I hope that it was so helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. You just have to practice. I feel like after a year's worth of using my Cricut, I can do it in my sleep by now and it's so fun and relaxing for me it's definitely a hobby of mine just creating new things it's so much fun I just love my crickets and I am genuinely so honored that I am doing a sponsored video for Cricut like I, I can't even believe that that's happening right now so thank you again to Cricut for sponsoring this video hopefully this was helpful for you if you're new here like I said make sure that you hit that subscribe button before you leave and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if it was helpful for you if you would like any more videos about my Cricut in the future leave that in the comments as well in the description box i will also link all of the products that i used if you are interested in getting anything for yourself if you use my links in the description i do get a small portion of it but don't feel like you have to i just genuinely love my cricut so if you are interested that is down below thank you so much for watching and for being here and for supporting me and i will see you in the next video bye friends